May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So I'm fairly sure I've mentioned that when we use the word gospel, we're actually just taking a word from sort of the Latin and we're not translating it. So usually we translate words, but this time we don't. Uh, and gospel means good news. Uh, and usually it was used in the context of an a proclamation from the emperor or the Caesar or someone in power. And it would be good news and then whatever would follow. Now sometimes the good news was, was good news. It's like, good news, uh, we have more grain than we expected, everybody gets a bit more bread. Good news, uh, taxes might only be going up a little bit. <laughs> so that's one of those ones that's a bit of a sting in the tail, isn't it? And you know, good news, we're sending the Roman legions through and you're going to be crushed. Sometimes you have to work very hard to find the good news in some of those uh, royal or em emperor type proclamations. And in, in one sense, I feel like that's the case with today's gospel. You know, good news, you should probably cut your hand off. <laughs> it's like, no! It's like one of my favorite two hands. Um, and so there's this kind of it, 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 it takes a bit of work to find the good news there. Now, for some people, uh, they, they just go, well, no, and they ignore it. They just say, is that No, <laughs> I'm not dealing with that. Uh, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's not one I would, would encourage, uh, but it's a choice. You know, people can walk away from things that are difficult all the time. Um, I walked away from the gym many times. <laughs> it shows. Um, no, uh, but I want to have a little bit of a look at that. And then there's, there is some really good news in this gospel passage that bracket it. But I, uh, actually, I'll do it the other way around. Um, so, you know, we've got the book club on a set last Sunday of the month. And this month we, we, we've read. Danger Music, which is about uh, a person who goes to Afghanistan and teaches music in Afghanistan, in the middle of a war zone. Great book, by the way. Uh, and it's stressful because, you know, people, bombs, explosions, fires, all the rest of it. And as part of the way that they manage stress, they adopt a practice of saying, of at the end of the day, reflecting on the day and going, good, bad, good. What's a good thing that happened? What's a bad thing that happened? And in that book, there are, you know, there was a truck explosion or something. There's so, oh, credit to people that go there. But anyway, and then what's another good thing? So good, bad, good. And I'll use that model for today. And it's, in, it's kind of in the pattern. So the first is the good. Uh, teacher said, John, we saw someone driving our demon in your name and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. That's really, really good. And now, it's, it's, it's a concept, you know, Jesus said this roughly 2,000 years ago, and we still have difficulties with it. Uh, I can remember when I was the assistant curate in Maryborough, and people were telling me about the fact that when their parents got married, or when they got married, one side of the family wouldn't come because... She was Catholic, and he was Anglican. And the f 2,000 years, and we're still arguing over whether or not people will come to the wedding because of which denomination within Christianity they are. <sighs> now, it's kind of easy to look back on that and just go, well, that's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? And there's a little voice in the back of my head that says, so in, a, in, in, in 50 years' time, who's going to be looking back on things that Andrew said and goes, oh, that's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> so, yes, we have, as human beings, we have a tendency to bunker, to compartmentalize, there's us and them and all the rest of it. But the good news is that Jesus says, whoever's not against us is for us. You know, break down the walls. 
expand the picture of the family. It's not just here. It's all through Scripture. All through Scripture. So often God is saying, you think the picture of those who are in the righteousness is this big, and I'm telling you it's bigger than that. So that is good news. That's good news. That's a good. Bad. Quite often, quite often, we, we tell ourselves the story, or we tell each other the story, that pretty much you can do whatever you want, as long as, you know, you say some prayers afterwards to say, God, I'm sorry I walked past that person who was homeless, or God, I'm sorry I decided to have an affair, or, and it's all okay. And Jesus says, no, no, it's not okay. You actually have to live into this as much as possible. It's not just okay to go, well, oh, I'm sorry. It's not. You need to work to live into this. Now, don't for a moment think that I'm going, I've got it all sorted. I've never made a mistake in my life, or I'm not even going to make another one moving forward from here. No, that's not the case at all. I know we, you know, we all get it wrong. But the challenge is there. The, 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 the challenge has been laid down for us to try and live into this, to enact in our lives what it means to be holy and set aside for God. And that's a bit of a bad, because of how often we fail. And it's a bit of a good, because of how often we are reminded of the graciousness of God. And grace doesn't just mean God says, they're there, it's okay. God says, yes, I know you got that wrong. Let me give you some space so you can actually try again. Grace is the space to change and grow. To set, apart, set aside our history and to move forward. So there's some, there's some good in that hard news, shall we say. And then moving on to the good. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? And the short answer is you can't. Uh, I, I, I did, I'm enough of a, of a chemistry geek. Um, chemistry is not really my thing, but you know, I know salt. It's a, it's a, it's a sodium chloride. It's a, it's, a, it's a salt plus a base. Uh, it, that's how you make salt. Acid plus a base gives you salt plus water. Anyway, um, so I, I know what salt is. And if it's not salt, it's not salted. If it is salt, it is salt. It's salty. And here's the thing. If we are God's children, to use that language, then that is what we are. You can't change that about us. Now, we can, we can act in ways that perhaps don't live into the fullness of that. But if we recall the good that God cares for us, that cannot change. Salt can never be not salty. If it is, it's not salt anymore. The good news is that we are loved by God. Now the other thing about salt, of course, is that it is useful. It is useful. And these days it's mostly useful for, for, for things like making food taste better. I'm a big fan of that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, in Jesus' day it was also useful as a currency, as a preservative. Uh, you can still use it for those things, of course. That's a currency these days, of course. Uh, but as a preservative, make yourself some beef jerky or something like that. Salt is useful. And this is why it was used. Because when we recognize that first we are loved by God, then we are free to act in a way that is useful to the world. And if that's just adding a little bit of extra positive flavor, that's great. If it preserves that something that is good so that people might not starve over the winter, that's, that's good too. But we need to recall that we are salt. We can't change that. But we can choose to be useful in that. And that too is good news. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.